So today we're just going to go through the EPCR and the new Siren um, documentation that we're switching over to. I'm doing this live with Leanne and David out of EK. Um, so hopefully everything goes smooth. Um, please know that if you have any questions after going through this, to contact myself or Leanne, um, and we can figure out anything that's going on. So to begin, the login screen is exactly the same as uh, what you've been used to. You would add with the normal add um, thing. There's nothing that's changed with this screen or for your initial login. So I've already made a patient here, so I'm just going to go in and edit that patient. Where did it go? There it is. Um, we just when lost the siren screen, though, when it clicked. Oh, okay. Or I did. Yeah, I did too. Yeah. Well, I'll switch it over. There we go. Now is it back? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. So if you're in here practicing, please go to menu, go down to current PCR and change it to a switch to practice until we go live just so that the charts will automatically be deleted when you sign off. Mine I'm just leaving as a test just because we're going through this training stuff. Um, but if you are going in to look around, make a practice right away so that nothing gets saved in the server. Once we go live, then it'll just be the same as we um, have been doing. So the first thing I want to point out is our little bubble up here. Um, this used to have a 250 character um, max uh, that you could type into here. That's been changed. So any white box like this has endless amounts of characters. You can type as much as you want. Um, the other great thing about this is their spell check. So I spelled memory wrong here. If it will turn up red if the spelling's incorrect. If you right click, it will give you a correct response or as close as it can come to it. The medical documentation in this should be up to date. So hopefully all of our fancy words that we sometimes put in there will get corrected if we spell them wrong. Uh, under identification, nothing has really changed there. Everything is the same. Um, you have the option of changing um, the date of birth. Everything's exactly the same. Uh, patient contacts, nothing has changed in here. Um, it gives you a little bit more room to put different patient contacts in here. That was there, wasn't there previously. Um, not that we use this a lot, but it is there if you need to. PHN, nothing has changed with this. Um, if you don't put in a PHN, it will come up incomplete and you can have to go in and edit it. There is a neat little button here and I'm just going to delete this. So this button over here, it's called reason for not entering. If you click this, it's going to ask you for a reason. You'll see that button pop up every once in a while. Um, I don't see this being used a lot for PHN, um, but if for some reason there is a significant reason for using it, it's there for you. I'm going to move to history. And David, if you have any questions through this, please by all means ask. Okay. So in the history, we used to have a, a button here called prior to arrival narrative. It has been deleted. We no longer have that. So when you go into your complaints and you open this up, you'll see that I click cardiac transfer diagnosis. I am encouraging everybody to put their prior to arrival narrative here. It shows up at the beginning of the chart, and it's kind of like your report that you're getting from the sending site, and it tells the history leading up to this patient um, coming to you and what developed your uh, chief complaint. Um, mm -hmm. You can expand the chief complaints. There isn't an others, or there is not an others, so you have to go with what's there and what's most applicable. Um, but again, the nice thing about this is it's endless amounts of characters, so you can type to your heart's content and it will be there. Allergies has changed. Um, it looks like this now and it's separated from medication and food allergies. The list is not super extensive, but quite extensive. Um, and you, there's an other button. So if you're to click the other and click OK, you can go in and edit it. And again, you have endless amounts of characters. 
The same goes with environmental and food allergies. Current medications. So at the beginning here, you see Farminet and see Mar. Those are great buttons for us because we'll use them a lot. The problem that we're having with this, and I'm going to see if I can get this changed with the first uh, revision, is if you click Farm in it, it will come up down here. I'll just click Mar and you'll see that it comes up and it says that it's incomplete. It will come up incomplete at the end, and it's something that you will, they'll force you to go in and before you can close out the chart. It wants a root, and generally if we're saying that um, you know, see Mar, there shouldn't be a root attached. So tomorrow I have a meeting with Medusa and hopefully we'll be able to get this fixed before we go live. And if not, it will be soon after. I would just go in here and pick oral and click OK and it's no longer incomplete. Once that's fixed, you'll see this won't be an option. It'll just come out normal. I'm hoping that there's a fix or we'll put in there um, something in here that would be more appropriate and we'll have it as the first button, like not applicable. Okay. Past medical history um, is significant. So almost every disease that you can think of will be in here. You can search at the top uh, and just start typing and it will pull it up. Um, you can go in there once you have them and actually edit and put more details if you wanted to, which is great. So that part's extended. You can put down who you got your medical, uh, your history from. Anywhere you see a pencil here, rather than clicking it and then hitting an edit button, you can just hold down your left key button and it'll automatically bring up the space for you. Nice. Um, the same with immunizations, COVID-19's in there, which is great. So if you can go in there, you can put the, like their last Im their immunization year and how many vaccines they had. Um, it just opens up more stuff for us to be able to chart with regards to past medical history. History of present illness um, hasn't changed from the previous version at all. It's all exactly the same. Injury is all exactly the same except for intensive injury. Um, this is new, so let's say you went for a gunshot or um, a stabbing, you could put that it was self-inflicted and you can go in and say whether or not it was intentional or not and describe the details. It's just more, more in depth into the history of the patient coming in. Oh, PQRST hasn't changed at all since the previous. Alerts hasn't really changed, but we did move some of these buttons around so that uh, there are, most will be right at the very front. Um, it's hard to see what they look like. Oops. I'll get rid of them and then hopefully we'll show how they're listed. You can see that they're right up front as soon as you open it up. So it's a little bit quicker rather than having to go and look for most, whereas that was the most common one that we we're putting in there. I'm going to move to vitals. Nothing has changed with this at all. On the first day of go live, I'll be sit, uh, I'll be doing a mass meeting with the PCCs to make sure that the LPN or LPs are all up and running. Um, the um, connection to the LPs is relatively seamless. They just need the initial setup, which I'll be able to do with them on the first go live day, and then they shouldn't need to be done after that. Lab values hasn't changed at all. Everything's still the same in there as you remember it. Uh, diagnostics, for some reason, they feel that we get PET scans regularly and they decided to include it in there. Um, if perchance you had a PET scan done and you want to include it, you can. Um, vehicle and crew, nothing has changed here at all. Um, it's the same. Dispatch, nothing has changed here. Uh, patient location, um, they changed where stuff is a little bit. We'll never use same as incident location. Uh, that's still part of uh, ambulance for this, but referring facility is now at the top, whereas it used to be at the bottom, and referring practitioner is now at the bottom. Um, the other thing that I can point out on the screen because I just did it, if you have these arrows at the bottom and you want to move up and down rather than using the arrows, you can just use two fingers on your mouse pad 
and it will scroll for you, which makes it a lot easier. Uh, destination is exactly the same um, as the patient location where referring facility is at the top and receiving physician is at the bottom. q and and dispatch is exactly the same as what we previously had and dispatch location is also the same as what we previously had. We went through and um, really firmed up uh, when we're using the patient or the dispatch location so that we're not getting as many errors with times in the end. If you run into problems with this going forward, please let us know, myself, Colleen, Leanne, so that we can go in and look and see what's airing out. I don't know if you remember before, David, if you went to your review and you're required, especially with some of the ones that we would normally do all the time, if you, uh, we'd always have this arrive base come up or um, different ones um, that were not uh, availability, those sort of things. They weren't there before and there was a glitch in the system and it ended up coming up so we've tried to fix that so it should hopefully go seamlessly with uh, when we go live with this. Times and details hasn't changed. Um, please follow the time guidelines that were we, uh, Colleen had put out uh, quite a while ago. I'm going to be sending out a PowerPoint um, just before go live, which has all the times in there and I'll also attach the the guidelines that Colleen set up, and that's what are required documents based on your um, dispatch location will be required for your times going forward. So if you're to click uh, heart They're base. the times that relate to the outcomes. So whether the patient is being sent from base facility, rural facility, that thing, and none of it has changed. It's just a good time to refresh people's memory because um, the times is what we pull our data and information for. So if we're tracking time spent in transport um, and that type of information, then having this input accurately is essential. So it's just a good reminder. Um, I do find it useful to pick the outcome prior to starting to input some of the times. Yes. And the outcomes um, have been like reduced a little bit. So you guys use the short run a fair bit. Yeah, some places do. Scene information I doubt we'll be using very much unless you come across an accident in which you can put this on here. Um, details and delays hasn't really changed at all. Exposure P PPE. Um, crew exposure. So if you're exposed to something, you can put it in here and what you utilize for your PPE itself. Now, would you use that for transporting a COVID patient that's vented and you're already have all your PPE on? No, it's not for a break in PPE. No, this for, is this is for okay. an actual exposure. So yeah. that would be a break in the PPE though, if it's an actual yes. exposure. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, so if for some reason you did have to remove your mask or you had a problem with it, then you could document under suspected exposure and please put in the PPE that you did utilize under under this okay. field. In the history where it says alerts actually allows you to document like what type of infection control precautions you were using, like whether it was contact droplet or um, just contact or that type of info. So there's okay. sort of there's two different spots, one to um, flag the t the type and then this box for which PPE you use specifically. Does that make okay. sense? Call sign is a new thing, so we want people to start recording which ambulance they're in. So I set this up like you're bouncing between three different ambulances, which you sometimes do in Cranbrook. Um, so it's just their call sign, and that way we can track and we can see if you're in multiple ambulances. If you're in beyond three ambulances, that should probably go on your QA anyways. Uh, but it's just for tracking, and then we know what vehicle you've been in. Um, and if you're doing a lot of bouncing between cars. Okay. Miscellaneous hasn't changed. It's just if you're overrun, so RN, RT, um, and if there's an RT on transport. 
So assess and plan. So the assessments have greatly um, been expanded compared to what we have previously. You'll see here my cursors just around generalized chest assessment. There's a headache assessment, pelvic assessment, neurological, and there's quite a few generalized assessments like back, gastrointestinal. This is all new and it will allow us to uh, greatly expand how much we're charting. So I'm just going to hold down my left button and this brings this up. So you can see that there's lots of stuff in here that you can um, go through and chart. Let's say it's just tenderness. You can just click and hold your left button and you can describe the details of what's going on there. Or you can just leave it like that and click OK and you're done. Um, but they've left it open so that in all of these you'll be able to go in and expand more on whatever the issue is. We also, one of the biggest things that we did with this before the verified two placement almost looked like you were intubating the patients uh, in assessments. We've yeah. changed that so it's much better now. So if you go to verified tube placement, this is an actual assessment versus looking like you actually did the intubation. In the treatment section, it is um, advanced airway and it's truly an advanced airway. It's not an assessment that you intubating. Um, Sean, can you just show again how to add information for the assessments once you're into the second screen? Um, is it a click and hold or are you able just to click on the pen and edit? So you can do either. So I just okay. click generalized chest assessment. I didn't hold it down. I could have held it down with my left key. Um, so I just clicked it and I can go into the edit button and get here. Or if I want, I can just hold down and it will just pop up. OK, and then for once you're in these ones, like say you wanted to add some details about a rash. So if I just click it, nothing yeah. happens. It just stays okay. like that. If I click and hold, it will bring it up. OK, so it's a click and hold once you're onto the second screen yes. field. Okay. Yes. Someone else had a question about that, so I just wanted you to go through it. Thank you. Yeah, and if I click next, it just goes on to the next assessment that I had in my line. OK, okay anatomical. Um, nothing's changed with this. It's exactly the same. So if you bring a little stick figure up, you can spick a spot and do a search for whatever you like. Um, numbness in that area. You click OK. It's going to be the same thing when you see it on your chart. It's not going to show a little stick man. It's just going to say thoracic spine numbness. Um, and it's just going to pinpoint the areas. They put the little stick man on there so it's easier for us for charting it. If you use this, I don't I haven't seen very many people use this. Treatments, like I said, the advanced airway, I'll open that up. It's much more detailed um, and goes into everything that you would do for intubation, but this is, um, it also has this times attempted. Or time attempts abandon. So I guess if you abandon your intubation attempts. So it's nice and it's just geared towards actually intubating and nothing else. So if the person is already intubated and you're just verifying and doing your checks, yeah, you can chart that only in assessments. Yes. This one really tr truly is a treatment and you as heart are doing the intubation. Yes, 100%. Otherwise, there's not a lot of treatments that have changed. That was the biggest one that we wanted to point out. Otherwise, everything else is pretty much the same. Um, there are a couple in here that weren't in there before, um, but they're all pretty self-explanatory. Summary hasn't changed at all, so you can do your charting through here too once you've selected it all and go through it and organize your times and everything else. <clears throat> so speaking of times, I'm going to go back to assessment. So sometimes we get caught up and we're busy doing things and we'll put in a um, you know, we've assessed the patient and we need to go in and chart. So I'm just going to bring up an APU here. When I edit and I go to here, you're going to see some times along the top. 
So the times are current, assume time, departure site time, and last entered. You can use these times. So let's say I did my AVPU when I assumed my care. I can just dis put assume care and it will change the time to that time. And I can click OK and it's good to go rather than entering the time. I can also put in there um, the current time. I can put in the last entered time that I had and it will move it to those. So that part's kind of nice. It's just a one clicker. Um, mm -hmm. Depending yeah. on how you chart, you might find it easier. Can you just pull that screen up again for one moment, Sean? Yeah. With the times. You have had to have entered those in your times under transport though already. So if you yes. see where it says depart site, it's grayed out. So that would be because there's no time entered in that yet. So obviously Sean has entered an assumed care time. So it's allowing him to use that as an option. So if those times are grayed out, you just have to go back to your outcomes times and enter those times in there and then you can pick them moving forward. So let's um, do one question about the laptop specifically. Do you know if these things will automatically change time through the time zones? Because we have that issue going to Creston. Do you know if they correct question. it? I will find out for you, but they should. And the reason why they should is because they're always live. Because like our, the GTAX doesn't. It stays on Cranbrook time, regardless of the time zone that we're in, Actually, which is what we, we want. Had this, we did have this conversation are. with um, the people with Medusa, and I believe that your time zone consistently remains as the mountain time zone. So when you go in and out, because Crescent is different, it just yeah. I believe it stays in a consistent time zone rather than flipping back and forth. Okay. So you can see that I went in and put a depart time, yeah. um, and it's now a, I can highlight like I can select that time now. Okay. Additional procedures and assessments. So the first one here is for feeding. Um, if perchance you have an infant, you have an, you have a spot that you can document that. Um, this won't really apply to EK um, or Cranbrook, um, but it's a really nice area for Penticton and RH that we can now we have a formal assessment place for doing our post band removal uh, for anybody coming out of the cath lab. And it's endless pages. Um, so not that it applies to you, David, but yeah. uh, for people that do this, it's actually a really nice thing to see that there is actual documentation for us built in for doing this band removal. Um, the biggest. Back for in treatments. Um, yes. If you do a bunch of treatments and you're trying to get cut, cut up on your charting, is there a way to select like five or six of them and change the times all at once instead of going into each one individually? No. Mm. No, you don't have that option. Like, you know, I know on a computer, like on other computers, you can press control or shift to select more. Yeah. This doesn't allow you to. Okay. You still have to go and change each individual, individual timestamp. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. It it should go quicker with the with the updated version of how to switch the time, but yeah, it's still not perfect that way. That would be nice. It'd be really nice if you could do that in summary. Um, you know, go here and select multiple times, um, but it won't let you. Okay. Um, I'm going to move to outcomes. Outcomes hasn't really changed. Everything is kind of the same here. Um, yeah, I don't see anything that's changed, but this is where it's really important for your times to make sure that you're um, putting in the right response outcome so that you're not getting killed with all kinds of things at the end, um, requesting different times that you haven't completed. Pay some position during transport. This is a little bit new. It used to be called something else, or I gave you a couple options, uh, but this is really self-explanatory. Cardiac arrest hasn't changed at all. Um, you can select whatever is appropriate for that. Reference is this general section. Nothing's really gonna be used here, except for if you requested a review of your chart, you can click yes. 
just so you know, all reds should be reviewed anyways, but if it's something specific that you want reviewed, you can click yes here. Please still also click or like check the box off on your safety risk assessment form though. I'm not 100% certain how this will um, get flagged at the back end of SIREN and if it will get noticed right away. So definitely still want you to indicate review and if it, and a reason why if you're requesting something specific, okay? Okay. Leanne, I'll look at that later today. Okay. Um, and see if I click that, if it comes up for me uh, specifically. Yeah. It's just, I think each PCC has a little bit of a different system um, for looking to see what needs to be reviewed. So I think having it on, the, on just, yeah, definitely always put it on your on your risk form too. Don't think that this covers everything. <laughs> Documents attached here. This is for future use that we'll be using. Um, so don't worry about it right now, but we're hoping that in the future we'll be able to have a spot here where your PPOs will be so you can just click them, fill them out, and once you save them, they'll save right into um, this program itself. Um, but that's okay. future future wishes. Review hasn't changed at all. You'll see that the all the little stop stop hands and X's. So if you see a stop hand, that means that you cannot bypass this. If I was to click it, you can see that it's grayed out. There's no way that I can bypass this at all. Whereas if there's just an X, I'll be able to go in and but that it's not applicable, not available or unobtainable. Um, yeah, that's really about it. So the other thing that, um, okay, so signatures and waivers, nothing's changed with this. Independent double checks is exactly the same. Same with blood cross checks and the same with transfer of care. That's where I got a little messed up initially was with the signature <laughs> and I just have to remember that it is still a touch screen as well. I think yes. because it operates much more like a laptop, it wasn't intuitive. So it's easiest to still do your signature by signing on the screen. Mm -hmm. yep, just like just like before. So one thing to add with all of this um, so previously with the previous version and previous laptops, we we're using net motion. Net motion is going away and we are no longer going to be using net motion with these computers. We're going to be using a VPN. Um, the nice thing about the VPN, it's been around for a long time and it doesn't go down as often. Um, it will allow for a more stable internet connection and it gives you full access to uh, your desktop. So I'm going to switch to my desktop. Can you guys see my desktop? Not yet. I think you might have to do a new share or. OK, I'm just going to sort it anyways. So you uh, will I'm likely get a, share here. an email that you've been set up with a VPN account. Um, and uh, when you log on, there'll be a little pop up that you sign into and the VPN access is just your regular mnemonic and Meditech password. Okay. How do I get my desktop? Just to share your screen. There, can you guys see my desktop now? No, we just see nope. the bubble with your picture. Oh, now we see us. <laughs> Now, can you see it? Yes, yeah. third okay. time's a charm. All right, so this box up here, um, heart transport documents. This is where this will be on everybody's laptop. You cannot delete it. Um, and it will only be there when you're using the laptops. When you log into a normal computer, you will not see this document, but it will be, it's permanently placed on all the laptops on everybody's desktop. So if you open it up, it will have everything previously that was there. This can't be deleted. Anything that needs to be edited in there has to go through uh, Colleen. She has control of this, but we made sure that it was stood out a little bit 
made sure that it was all in caps so it's not forgettable. I organized my desktop by I just went sort and item type and it put it up in the top left hand corner or it'll actually go right underneath recycle bin, which is probably the easiest way for you to see it. Where's the order set? Oh, there it is. It's not a it's not on the first page. You got to go. Into the PPOs to get it. Yes. Yeah, so you may want to just have a PPO on its own on your desktop. I probably mm -hmm. would rather than have to like go into the folder and then click, click, click. So just less clicks. Um, I'd also recommend just saving on your own desktop on the PC if you don't have it already, the safety risk assessment form just for yeah. um, ease of use. And you should be able to fill it out um, fill, save the fillable version and um, fill it out on there and then send directly from the desktop now. You shouldn't have to uh, go into so, your email and then attach, attach, yeah. attach. So. Microsoft Outlook works perfectly and seamlessly on here. So you just need to go through the initial steps of clicking next, 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 mm -hmm. and then it's set up. And then anything that you scan will go to that email and you can add it to your chart really easily. Anytime you're sending off QAs, it's just attaching it through here. So in a lot of ways, it's greatly improved our connectivity and it's going to make our life a little bit easier. We also will have access to clinical access, which we haven't previously on the GTAX. So you can go into any hospital sites that you're going to if they're on a monitor and see what's exactly going on. You can go and look at their vitals, everything. So nice. that part's really nice. Does uh, the drug monograph, is it accessible when we don't have service for the laptop? Uh, it will through the PPO, like through the heart uh, documents. OK. Um, that will always be there. It's a permanent file in there. OK. All right, any questions, David? No. All right, again, I'll remind anybody that watches this video, if you have questions, please just contact myself or Leanne um or colleen um and we'll be able to help you out uh and hopefully we go live extremely soon all right thanks thank you okay